Hey, catch all the action at Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. It's time to bring the cup home, baby. Yeah. And how Wait, do we bring they, the- they let you do that now? What do you mean? Boston Pizza lets you bring the, the cup no, home? No, that's not quite it. No? But they do uh, They do let us take over. Oh. It's a, with a great excitement that we share that we will be taking over Boston Pizza Boomanville. Hey, let's go. Woo! The Big Bo. The Big Bo. The Manville. As, the, as the Steve likes. Manville. <laughs> as Steve likes to call it. We're going to tape a live show <laughs> of the SDP. No, no. The show will be um, a ticketed event. There's only 70 seats available. It's 10 bucks a seat. If you want to buy a seat, hey. it's, um, it's in the description of this video. It's next. Or audio. Or audio, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Uh, join us on Saturday, April 27th. That is game four. Ooh. Cuatro. Whoa, whoa. You know? Spicy. Oh. Live STP. Oh, Jesse, you do that. Oh, wait, you can't roll your R's, friggin' loser. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I can't do that. April 27th, Saturday, live STP, followed by uh, the playoff game and prizing. Doors open at 5.30. Tickets are on sale now with the link in the description. And remember, here's <laughs> what this is all about. Canada's last cup happened when Steve was five years old. That's right. Mm-hmm. 30 years is a long time. BP has has been suffering alongside with Canadian fans. So the whole thing is they've got their new menu, their playoff menu, which you're going to be able to test next Saturday night. Oh. But also, we want to bring all Canadian sports fans together, all Canadian hockey fans together, and get one of these teams to win a gosh darn cup. You know in what the I'm, Manville. In you know the what Manville. I'm most excited for? What? When we Manville? walk into Boston, Boston Pizza and Steve does the thing he does every time where he's like, I don't need that menu. And he just orders chicken fingers. Yes. <laughs> We may or may not have visited the location the other day, and you won't believe what I got. And it was great. It was great. And I feel no shame about how great it was. (laughs) Boston Pizza, you can get your tickets below. We are so excited to be doing this. So come join us and hang out for the entire fun SDP live in the playoff game. Let's start the game. Or show. It's the show. Start the show, right? I don't need this menu. No, I don't. (laughs) Dangle Dangle with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. And now that we're on the announcement tear, let's announce some more things. The Steve Manville. Dangle. Oh, Steve right. Dangle. Yeah. It's the playoffs mm-hmm. starting tomorrow night. So, what will you be doing? Uh, oh, crying, writhing, rocking back and forth. And after that, I will be doing a live stream. Woo! Woo! On the SDPN YouTube channel, we'll be doing a watch along um, for the Toronto Maple Leafs versus Boston Bruins. That is what I'm going to be doing all first round. And then <laughs> second round, we'll see. Who knows? And then third round, I'll definitely be doing the Eastern final. And then I'll definitely be doing the Stanley Cup final. So there'll be streams all, all playoff season. All yeah. playoff long. Now, we should also mention that the Steve Dangle podcast, which we always do, but it, it you know, for people that are new listeners or, you know, forget, I don't imagine that you're keeping <laughs> tabs on us. Um, we'll be doing our shows after every Leaf game. So not in the middle of the night. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to be, Steve's going to be doing his streams, his LFRs, which puts him to bed at like one o'clock yep. and we're going to yep, make I'm sure right. that we get him at his most exhausted, which is the day following. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when our show is going to come out once things have had a chance to die down and we get to talk and whatever. Um, uh, so, you know, the Leafs playoffs start on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So Tomorrow. we'll be doing a show Sunday. Yep. We'll be showing, doing a show Tuesday. And then we're going to do one Thursday, and then it's a couple days in between because the next Leafs game is the next Saturday night because they're trying to guarantee as many Saturday Leaf games because even the NHL doesn't trust the Leafs, and then we will do Sunday <laughs> after that. Producer <laughs> Drew pointing this out last night, I don't think I've ever seen a three Saturday series ever. This this If this series goes seven, it's three Saturdays. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's why they yeah. bumped everything up. Yeah, so they could take try and take advantage of all the Saturday. And you'll get you'll actually get a day off on Friday next week. Like you get to yeah. just chill, man. When's the year? One day off, Steve. When, when's the year, guys? <laughs> when, when, when does it finally happen? 
What year? What, uh, like when I go on heart medication. Like what, when? Geez. When is it finally? <laughs> when is it going to happen? People, people are already That's asking dark. for the heart rate monitor. We got to get you like an Apple Watch. No, I don't that want it. That thing is so hard to rig up. Like don't don't put that stress on Drew. <laughs> it, like, put it, that uh, stress on Drew. He it's not an, it's not sweets. an easy application to run. It was a good bit, but I remember it being an enormous yeah. pain in the ass. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if you watch those streams for the first couple of years, it's just like hey. I know we can't do this without it sticking 20 times a game, <laughs> right. but let's add more things. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was anyway, we figured it out eventually. Now, uh, moving, we're going to expand our playoff coverage this year and have some fun and do yes. some things because the streams have been really, really fun to be a part of. And I got to do one the other week. Yeah. How'd you like it? Well, I liked, Shut it. Up, I liked stupid. it a lot. It was such a, Sorry. it was a bad, it was the worst game I've ever watched. Actually, somebody, I think it was Tim Haraney tuned in and he was like, this is the worst hockey game I've ever seen. <laughs> He's like, um, but um, I have decided that since my enemies this year are the Nashville Predators, mm. I'm going to go every single Canucks game in the first round. Whoa. So I will be streaming. Not at, Preds game. No. They just happen to Canucks, be there. <laughs> no. Yeah, these no. are Canucks they games. They just happen to also be in the, in the no. game. And I don't no, know if no, you guys no. saw this. I don't know if you guys saw this before. Uh, Nashville are so afraid of Vancouver that they're not allowing anybody outside of the state of Tennessee to buy a ticket. Yeah, that's, that's been the case, though. That's how that's how it works. I lo- what a bunch of babies Nashville that's, are. Oh, Whoa. What a bunch goodness. of babies. Am I right? More Vancouver? Like, more like mild chicken. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hot chicken. Uh, that's what you guys look like right now. Just a bunch of chickens. Whoa. <laughs> hey. Um, so I will be doing every Canucks game. That kicks off for you on Sunday, yes. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. So I will be doing Sunday night. I'm very excited. And here's the fun part is that um, we're going to follow. I'm going to follow the West teams through. So if uh, the Canucks, I mean, come on, let's be honest. The Canucks are making it through. Um, <laughs> oh, geez. Right. Oh. <laughs> we're calling it right now, aren't we, Vancouver? We're jacked. We're excited. I bought one of the playoffs clinch shirt, too. No, no, it's Quinn, not Jack. Ah. Was, oh, I get oh. it. Uh, we're Quinned. Yeah, there we're you go. Quinned. Wait, <laughs> why didn't, why did they sell clinch shirts? They could have just sold quenched shirts. Oh, <laughs> shut <see>? up. <laughs> why, why didn't anyone think of quenched? Quenched? You know what? The they quenched need to call us. the playoffs. All right, we'll add it to the store. I like, I like that. Let's there wear, it is. I will wear that. Um, so I'm going to be doing every Canucks game. Now, Jesse yeah. is doing something that's really fun before every Steve Leafs stream and some of mine, but we're not totally sure yet. Jesse, what will you be doing? Because I love I've, this. I've been tasked with handling the pregame duties. So an hour before, I'm going to try and do as many as I can because Boston pizza is going to be difficult. I'll probably do like an early stream or something like that. Um, Wednesday, Adam and I might have tickets to the game. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, uh, we might be there. So that'll be fun. No, but I can't pregame stream that. But hopefully before every game, when you guys are streaming, I'm going to be live an hour before you guys leading into your streams. And I'm going to be playing NHL 24. And I'm going to bring back my GM mode. So, so, oh, baby, <laughs> you know, what's great about this is Jesse has won zero cups and I think he's done six or seven seasons. How many seasons have you done? Oh, my gosh. Countless. Like in terms of like actual mm-hmm. seasons. Yes. Over like a dozen. So this is going to be great. And you're not going to be playing any of the games. You're just simming. Them. No. So we have like specific rules we do on the streams. It's you you can't handle any of the lineup changes. You can't do anything that a GM wouldn't do. So right. I let the there's like organizational settings. You get uh, set ticket prices and all that stuff. We don't do any of that. We do GM duties only. We sim everything during playoff games in the NHL 24 mode. We sim those and we watch those. But outside of that, we sim through the regular season. And yeah, it's a it's a blast if you've never been on one of my NHL 24 streams. Um, I have a lot of fun buttons I press, and that's where Crab People comes from. So if you want to be a part of that, it'll be an hour before any Steve or Adam stream. Right. I don't know how I'm supposed to compete with this. This is like when Metallica opened for Guns N' Roses, and everyone was exhausted <laughs> by the time Guns N' Roses took the stage. I can't do it. I can't compete. Oh, no, I don't think I said it. I'm going to be streaming uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, that's going to be my GMO. That's the team I'm going to run with. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was uh, some talk about doing uh, possibly the Coyotes and then just making them an expansion team and moving them to Utah. But 
I think that's a next season task. Yeah, it seems a little raw. Yeah, yeah. No, let's people have <laughs> lost their team. Let's not get crazy. Let's let's right? let them sit in that yeah. for a little. Now, what what <laughs> franchise are you going to use the Leafs or are you going to use somebody else? No, no, we're doing the Leafs. Are you doing the yeah, Leafs? Yeah. So you'll have you'll be stacked with talent. Who will you trade John Tavares to this time? Uh yeah, probably first day you trade JT, you get Lucas Raymond, you know, <laughs> bolster up the lineup. Again. Again. <laughs> I'm going to kick you down the stairs. Um <laughs> SDP's bracket challenge is now live. The link is in the description and this time we have have actual prizes. Uh, so Jesse, do you want to bring up the prizes that we have? So it's it's a doll. <laughs> it's not a doll. <laughs> it is a figure. <laughs> so the top three finishers in the SDP bracket challenge will be gifted their choice of a Jonathan Marcheseau figurine, a Mark Stone figurine, or a Jack Eichel figurine. Where's Jack Eichel? He's, He's right here. There you go. I could be talking to the bike and grab And that's it. from yeah, McFarland Toys, who actually, be, they are the official maker of these. Mm -hmm. And they're back. And I'm so happy about it. Yeah. So you'll be gifted this. And then first place, I'll get a $150 gift card to the sdpnshop.ca. Second place gets 100 Third place gets 50 So and it's fun prizes. I'm, I'm bummed for you guys because I'm already going to win it. So <laughs> I'm really sorry. But we will be competing in it. And I will be beating you. I have like two, I compete in the F1 pool for SDPN as well. I have two really stupid picks in the first round. And if I get them, though, there's no shot any of you beat me. There's just no shot. There's a little bit of Because I made, Steve. I made a bracket oh, yeah. video oh. that is going to be going up on uh, this YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> what else do we have to announce? Now, we got to talk. Adam is wearing a blue shirt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we told you about the SDPN or SDP schedule changes. As far as we know, uh, everybody else will be on the same schedule. Drew and Stu just put out their playoff predictions episode. So if you are uh, somebody that loves to bet a little bit, put a little $2 Steve on this action, uh, they're definitely the guys to watch. Plus, they're hilarious. Uh, CJ and, and uh, Julian are probably going to keep to Mondays and Thursdays, but you have to be aware that especially CJ this time of year does travel. So from mm -hmm. time to time, it'll change it. We'll, we'll let you know when Nick too. <laughs> oh yeah. Nick oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's Vancouver. A yeah. It's a, it's a tricky time of year. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. So, uh, uh, we, um, uh, we Expect got a lot more, not less. We got a lot to way. do. Um, so here's what I want to, uh, what I want to ask you guys, do we start with the playoff brackets and make our calls? Do you want to do that? Or do you want to start with, mm. Our preseason picks. I think we we go oh, back oh, first. Oh, you want right? to go back it's, first? Yeah, we okay. start in the and then we work our way towards where we are now. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Now you have the picks, Jesse. Yeah. Let me uh, give me a second to bring it up. Okay. I'm very excited about this because uh, one of us who got eight, eight out of eight in the West was that Jesse? I, think I Jesse. did get eight out of eight in the West. Okay. Which is, and the orders are not great relative <laughs> to how we normally do with these. This was a pretty successful year for us, from what I understand. Yeah. It depends how you judge it. Like, did first we, up, did we get the playoff teams? I think you and I, we did six out of eight in, right. in the West and six out of eight in the East. Jesse got six out of eight in the East and it's eight out of eight in the West. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you and I got the majority of the playoff teams. I deserve some flack for having the second seed be not a playoff team. <laughs> well, well, let's go. Well, when we go through them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, I, you're right. Order matters. Yeah. But you got to remember the mindset we were in. Before this season started. Oh, I had logic behind all of them. Sure. I did. I did. We One thing I know I we were banging I don't about regret my picks. Was the Metropolitan. No. Oh, it was it. it was as bad as everybody expected it to be with the exception of two teams. And in fact, I probably should have rated the Rangers higher. And naturally, the hottest team heading into these playoffs, you guessed it, the New York Islanders. Yeah, right? <laughs> Eight, exactly. one, and one. All right. So I we got to shout out two people. What The first one is Insider J Money, who is like uh, the big fan of the CJ show and big fan of the SDP. Insider J Money put together this fantastic graphic um, of ah. our picks for each division. So we can start in the Pacific. Ooh. And also Red Shark Ooh. Pack on discord who put together the google docs which we can go through as well that show like our average deviation from the actual standing okay so we can go through these and then i'll pull that up so we can see like how well we Dude, did based I on thought, the actual standings i thought you said we did well <laughs> holy sh my pacific division's a mess so yeah. you want to just uh, tell the people so steve okay. who were your picks from one to eight i one had, being good i had the oilers winning the division which i mean i don't think i was alone there in fact i know i wasn't alone there there's adam uh, Vegas number two, they barely squoke in. 
Um, the uh, Calgary Flames is the three seed. <laughs> Whoops. The LA Kings is the four. I think I nailed that. Um, but I had the Kraken ahead of the Canucks. Ugh. And all three of us had the Sharks seven and the Ducks eight. Um, I, I'll i forgive us <laughs> for, I mean, who cares? They, they, we knew they were both going to be bad and we nailed that. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I don't think anybody could have predicted the Sharks being um, as historically bad as they were right off the bat. Zero, nine, and one, I believe, was their start. It was not good. I don't think anybody can predict a team being that bad because at the end of the day, it is the NHL. But, Jesse, where, where, like, can we bring that graphic yeah. up for just a second? You want to talk about yours next? Okay, so I had yeah. the Oilers winning the division, uh, which I felt good about. They came second in the division. Uh, the Golden Knights coming second. LA Kings third, which I got. I had the Kraken rated higher. And I was stupid. Dude, they were um, coming off like a really strong season in and which a decent playoff. Nobody like, had nobody had a great year for them. They all had an average year. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody was like, oh my God, somebody broke out and got a hundred points. They all had like, you know, their their career average in points. I thought like, that's gonna happen. No. Almost like a light version of the stars this year. Like the stars mm-hmm. this year are better, but like just a, a by committee team. I'll tell you where I screwed up. I screwed up by putting any faith in the Calgary Flames and their organization. Yeah. I had them in fifth, and that's that's too much faith. Uh, and then I had the Van- Vancouver Canucks six, just like Steve. And the reason I had them six is because they were essentially the same team. Like what? What was different about the Vancouver Canucks this year? What did uh, they really add? Me, what did they add? Uh, Phil Ronick, right? They had yeah, a full year a of him. Full season of Ronick, which, oh, which well, was great. A healthy Demko. A healthy Demko. And also Quinn Hughes took a step. Absolutely. Pedersen was like, even though you think he's bad, Pedersen was like, test me Vancouver management. And uh, they had a, they had an unbelievable year. I, you know, I think the most underrated part of the Vancouver Canucks is 40 goal Brock Besser. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man, he kind of looked cooked. <laughs> yeah. He and, sure did. and look at that. I don't know. Every time people talked about him being bad, I'm like, are we talking about the same Brock Besser? And yeah. Here so I think the most embarrassing thing for Steven for myself is, is the Vancouver Canucks. Jesse, this less embarrassing. Uh, go ahead. So, so on my picks preseason, I had Vegas, Edmonton, LA, Vancouver as the top four in the division. Seattle, Calgary, San Jose, and Anaheim. And Adam, you hit on it there. The thing I wanted to touch on is I'm most proud of my Vancouver pick because I saw what they did last season. Once Rick Tockett got in there, they were one of the best teams in the in the National Hockey League. And, and nobody really trusted it. But I said, they're playing a different brand of hockey. And I think it's a brand of hockey that's going to work. And it ended up working this regular season. I had them in fourth and they jumped all the way to second. You know, like even fourth was an uh, under prediction. So... I think that's great. I think LA is kind of like solid where we thought they'd be. And I'm I was shocked when you guys had so much faith in Calgary Flames because I know. I know. they weren't very good. And the way you kind of analyze Vancouver Canucks is, is where they, they weren't good. And what did they do to get better? That's how I felt about the Flames, you know? Well, and with them, there was even more lack of evidence that they would be good. So I had them down in sixth and they ended up finishing tied for fifth uh, in sixth with the Seattle Kraken, but they had broke the tiebreaker. So they ended up fifth. My, my flames pick is even stranger now um, having them third because I'm like, nah, Markstrom's going to be way better. And then he was, and they were worse. <laughs> like yeah. I never would have called that he, him yeah. having a huge comeback and them being worse. Like, ah, uh, I, I barely even feel bad about that one. Yeah, and it was it started bad, and it was bad the whole year for them. So well done, Jesse, on those picks. Not right. bad. Next year, we need to remember Vegas doesn't care about the regular season. Yes, they they're a playoff team. Yes. Uh, next up, Central. Steve, you want to kick it off? Ooh, I did all right here. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, the Dallas Stars. Number two, the Colorado Avalanche. Not quite. They were number three. Minnesota, that's a big old hiccup. (laughs) (laughs) That's a whiff. They were not very good. I had them third. Winnipeg Jets fourth, uh, one spot down from, or no, they finished second. Second. uh, Above the, oh dear. Above, oh. Number five, I was the most bullish out of all of us on the Arizona Coyotes. Um, I uh, didn't account on them losing like, what was it, 15 straight? Yeah, that stretch in the winter months. Dude, they were straight up fine. Yeah, like they they were in a playoff spot 
like what around Christmas, mm -hmm. and then they just kind of died. Um, St. Louis Blues, roughly where they were. Nashville Predators, that's a huge whiff, and I know Jesse's going to be all over this. I can <laughs> yeah. let, let me He's get feeling so good about that right now. <laughs> so yeah. good. And uh, all three of us had uh, the Blackhawks last. Hooray for us. They have no uh, players. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they got I mean, one. I mean, literally before the season began, they had no players. So They had yeah. one. And then they got Corey Perry, and then the, the, he left, so they had fewer players. So I'm the only one that didn't get the division winner right. I, I had more faith in the Colorado Avalanche. And what we found out throughout the season is that they are more of a one-line team. And Dallas has really emerged as... And they had their struggles, right? Dallas had some goaltending issues earlier on this year. Sorted all that out. They are top to bottom, a spectacular team, and would be my pick next year to win the division. This is my favorite little bit of uh, trivia for these playoffs. How many players on the Dallas Stars had over 50 points? No idea. Nine. <laughs> and who would have called that? I know they're more free-flowing than they ever used to be, but holy smokes. Wow. Sports. Nine. That's crazy. Jason Robertson led the team with 80, which is like mm -hmm. a lower total. Um, but it's spread out. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's spread out crazy. Their leading goal stat. scorer only had 32 goals. It was Wyatt Johnston. Like, they, they're just really solid. I, I don't know where you hide. So I had the Avs winning. I had Dallas in second. I had Minnesota in third. Now, I'll be honest with you. I was tainted for a couple reasons on Minnesota. First off, I was so impressed by what they did last year. Second, they included me in their playoff sizzle reel. So I had, to give them, <laughs> I had to give them some love, guys. I was completely biased. And they were in the playoff race until the end, but no. Uh, and then the Winnipeg Jets. Man, who could have accounted for Ayafalo and Velarde? Not, listen, they're good players. They're great players. But who knew they were going to fit Winnipeg like this? I, Game one, they come in, and I know Velarde was injured for a little bit uh, to start the year. But holy, both of them have been like amazing fits. I was bullish on that trade from the day it happened. And even that, though, like, I mean, the bread and butter for the Winnipeg Jets is no one could score on them. Yes. So even though they got better offensively, no one could bloody score on them or now, deeper offensively. Issues. So we all had them in fourth, but they did make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I put um, I put St. Louis in fifth because I thought there was going to be a big improvement from them. And I'm a big believer in what Armstrong's doing there. And there was. And people were dunking on this post. But the St. Louis Blues had 10 more points this year than they did last year. And... You're so, the only one of us who got this right. I think. You nailed it. Yeah, they yeah. finished in fifth. They yeah, finished well in fifth. I, I think that the St. Louis Blues are headed back to the playoffs next year. Now, I counted out the Nashville Predators, and I had them in seventh below <laughs> the freaking Coyotes. Man. Wow. Which is brutal. And by the way, wow. the Coyotes pick was making me sweat, and I was hearing it from Coyotes fans earlier this year going, we're going to make the playoffs. You're screwed. And of course, it didn't happen. At least you um, didn't have them uh, two spots below the Coyotes yeah, like then, I did. What a dumbass. <laughs> and then the Blackhawks are, you know, where they should be. Jesse, go ahead. Also, Jesse, rub it in our, just rub our nose. I man. didn't say this last division, but credit to Adam, who also nailed the Calgary pick. Like he was, he was oh. bullish on Calgary, but they ended up finishing fifth. Exactly so where I thought you they did. Would be. You did kind of nail it there. Anyways, um, Nashville, my division picks were Dallas, I yep. got that right. Colorado got that right. Nice. Nashville, incorrect. But not bad. I just need to flip Nashville and Winnipeg, and I would have been four for four. But I had Nashville in third. No, Winnipeg was second. Oh, Winnipeg was second? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they finished second, yeah. You were, but, I didn't I get mean, Colorado right. You got My the bad. top four. You just messed up the order. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I had Dallas, Colorado, Nashville, Winnipeg. And then out of the playoffs, I had Minnesota, St. Louis, Arizona, Chicago. And with Nashville, I wish I went back and watched the season preview for Nashville because I think the thing that made me so bullish was that it was the thing you kind of brought up with Dallas is their overall just competence in depth scoring. Yeah. The thing they lacked was high end, high end talent, which they still kind of do. But the way they're able to do it as a committee, I was like, they can get this done. And with UC Saros and net, they can stop enough pucks. And the defense looks is really good. It looked really good preseason. Everything kind of worked out there. So I'm very happy I believed in Nashville Predators and they came through for me. Man, did you ever? That was a really good call, Jesse. I remember being shocked when you said that pick. And it was spectacular. Really great pick. The one thing I want to say is what's it going to look like when we have the Utah Venom or the Utah Blizzard or the Utah HC Venom's so, next my year? Favorite. So the hockey guy, uh, Shannon, I love on Shannon. his channel was talking about names and he, somebody threw out the Utah Miners because Miners. Nope. And, and he said, you know what? We can't have a game where the Utah Miners go up against the Nashville Predators. <laughs> no! <laughs> Oh, miners funny. versus predators. And I was funny. like, Shannon, that's hilarious. That's a good line. 
<laughs> good line. Good, good job, Shannon. <laughs> One of the nicest people, by the way, on the face of the earth. I love Shannon. Such a good guy. <sighs> anyway. um, okay. Oh, Steve. Oh, have... All right. So um, most surprising performance on Nashville. 75 points, 23 goals. Who am I talking about? Go ahead. Go ahead. You have an answer in your head. Who is it? It's not Ryan O'Reilly. No, it's not. He finished fourth behind this person. Wow, I don't know. Gustav friggin' Nyquist. I know. Hey, the guy I called out. Where directly. did that come from? I know. Well, I, I'm sure Columbus is wondering that. Because like... <laughs> I, with everyone who's ever employed him years. to play hockey for them. <laughs> he He's never cracked 60. Yeah. Mm. Where did, his career high was 54. Wasn't that with Detroit? And he did it with Detroit in 2015. Yeah. Where did this come from? Oh. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. It's okay. you, the power of you too. You got to believe. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Steve, you're uh, a beautiful day. Oh, this is painful. Yeah. Um, oh, he fake. Oh, Adam. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I had the Carolina Hurricanes first in the Metropolitan. I was only one spot off. I had the Devils second. I had the Rangers third. We all did. What's wrong with us? I had the Islanders fourth. I nailed that one, right? No, no they were third. third. Damn. Third, yeah. Uh, Penguins fifth. I th Nope. Didn't nail that one either. Uh, the Capitals sixth. The Blue Jackets seventh and the Flyers eighth. Boy, this division. I didn't get a single one, did I? Oh, shit. Yeah, I didn't get not. a single one. Exactly where are the, where are the right. Penguins? Fifth. Uh, the below the count. No, we all got fifth. We all got fifth. The we Penguins all... were fifth. You know, you got Penguins. Yeah, you nailed where the yeah, really? yeah, the Penguins were fifth in the division. Yep. Yeah. Oh, the Capitals were fourth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Capitals all right. All right. Yeah. One, four, eight. One, four, eight. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I mean, Carolina, that's a pretty good pick, right? Uh, they finished real close to first. Uh, Rangers, uh, I always thought was good. I did not think would be this good. And the New Jersey Devils, like, I don't know. I, I thought they would score more goals. Two injuries really early in the season completely sunk them. Jack Hughes was on pace for like a runaway art Ross trophy through like what a month mm -hmm. or like two weeks, three weeks. People yeah. were paying to see him play. Yeah, they absolutely were. Um, and Dougie Hamilton. So you have your best forward playing injured all season and you have your best defenseman not playing. Yeah. That'll kill you. Also, and, and let, they had no goal. Let's throw out there too, that, uh, that yeah, their goaltending is just a trophy. Yeah. Just a tr if they had normal goaltending, they'd probably be in the play. And Dougie Hamilton. Yeah. Um, I think uh, a team that deserves their flowers here, like we all thought the Flyers would be just miserable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it took them until the final game of the season to get eliminated. It's amazing. They still uh, finished sixth, though. They, yeah. Well, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, Adam, take it away there, bud. So the Metropolitan, I had the <laughs> Devils in first. And oh. you know, I'm a longtime Devils fan, so perhaps I'm a bit biased. But how could you not? If there's anybody. That's looking at last season. Because remember, all we had to go on was the previous year. The Devils were looking like they this was, they this was so their good. year. Yeah. They were going to be spectacular. Yeah, it was going to be a race with the Carolina Hurricanes, which is why I put the Carolina Hurricanes in second, which I nailed, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that, that if it, no sane person could have done, like nobody you could take seriously would have said the Devils are missing the playoffs this year to start the year. No, nobody. Someone did, and didn't they get a bunch of crap for it? Did they? I'm sure they did, and and rightfully so. They should get crap for that because you're you're at this point you're guessing, uh, and this is all this is. So yeah, New Jersey one, Carolina two, Rangers third. Should have should have put more stock in that. I'm happy with my Islanders pick, even though they've ended up finish finishing uh, fourth because they were letting me down all bloody year, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden. And I told you guys, I'm like, there's no way the Penguins make the playoffs. They made me sweat there towards the end, <laughs> and they didn't. Thank goodness. But I had here's the egregious one. I had Columbus ahead of both Washington and Philadelphia, and I want to apologize to those cities because Columbus was atrocious this year, and I should have been smarter because I, the Babcock situation should have should have been the, the the warning shot that this is a poorly run organization, and it is. I'm really surprised I had the Blue Jackets seventh because we were. I, we seem pretty unanimous that, oh, yeah, that's an improved team. Mm -hmm. It sure seemed that way, ta talent-wise. Go ahead, Jesse. I went Carolina, New Jersey, New York, Islanders, Penguins, Columbus, Caps, Flyers. And I think my you lesson... And I, you and I agreed on every pick except flip the Blue Jackets and Capitals. Adam and I's picks are the exact same three through eight. 
Ooh. Like I, I think going into next season, I need to remember if my picks are the same as Adams. I need to switch, switch it up. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I shouldn't have drank the New Jersey Kool Aid so much. That you should always be wary of the young team after coming off of their their hot start the first year. Yep. You know, yep. like I feel like across pro, pro sports, it's like you need to establish yourself and you need to do it, and then we can believe in you for a long term period. So I wish I had New York um, a lot higher in the division there, and that's how it ended up playing out. So um, some lessons here for next year. Also, Flyers, yeah, as as you said, like credit to them. We all had them in eighth. They almost made the playoffs. That is an unbelievable task um, that they accomplished there in Philadelphia. So uh, yeah, like amazing. Uh, oh, I think the Flyers are going to finish last. Okay, what if I told you uh, Carter Hart is just going to really super abruptly stop playing games for them oh they're gonna finish below last mm -hmm. and uh you know they made a they made a game of it yep. what last day of their regular season almost made the playoffs yeah full respect to the flyers all right let's move on to the atlantic where all three of us oh. have the toronto maple leafs winning steve go through your picks please. oh no uh the leafs first um eh. like we all thought what they were missing was toughness and then they added it and hooray um they still did well. Um, it just seems like they can't do the best. Um, there was that Canadian division. That's a one-off. It's a made-up division that doesn't exist anymore. Who cares? Sabres. Boy, oh boy. I really thought uh, Tage Thompson was going to continue the magic. I thought their defense was going to take another step. And I invested way, way, way too much stock in Devin Levi. Um, mm. it, it, you know, goalies aren't billed. Uh, built overnight um i mean they took it real slow with him and they should have they probably should have taken it even slower so that i messed that up the bruins third they finished second ah you know what i wasn't bad there the lightning fourth i think i nailed that one yes you did um we all did all right good for us panthers fifth we whiffed um mm -hmm. all three we, we thought they would return to the regular season team they were last year nope they were a lot closer to the playoff team that they were. Sens in sixth. Um, it's funny. I think we all agreed they were better, um, but just wouldn't give them their flowers. The the real, I mean, a big whiff here. If I had only swapped the Red Wings and Sabres, maybe I would have looked somewhat smarter. No, I wouldn't have. That's still terrible. And the Habs uh, in last place. Um, I'm pretty sure that's who finished. Yes. Last. Yeah. Was it them in the Senate. No, Ottawa, Ottawa, Ottawa was last. Yeah. 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 I didn't points, do though. so bad with the Atlantic, but I, yeah, there's room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So I picked the Leafs. I got, uh, picked the Bruins second Sabres third. Now I want to talk about the Sabres for a second. Everybody just like New Jersey bought on the Sabres. And again, as Jesse said, Maybe be careful with the young upstart team that's all of a sudden doing really well. Although I do think next year they figure out that goaltending, Byron uh, and Dolly. You've learned and, nothing. <laughs> this You've learned nothing. Good, right? They have so much. If Tage Thompson doesn't go down early and Steve <sighs> doesn't trade him for a bag of pucks, uh, and is you know like if Tage Thompson's a forty goal scorer, I feel like we're having a different conversation. The Lightning, they are they are where they were. They finished fourth. Good for them. I actually think the Lightning are better now, and I, the reason I had them in fourth was because of Vasilevsky's injury. Turned out to be right. Florida, I didn't take as serious as I should have. I got bullied on Ottawa. I'll be honest with you. I thought Ottawa was worse, but I started oh, yeah? to drink the Kool-Aid <laughs> and go, you know what? No, maybe they are better. Maybe they are right about Eunice Corposello. Maybe they do have it together. New owner coming in. The vibes are great because the vibes were great. And then they were docked that first round pick and Pinto got suspended and Dior, Dorian got fired. Oh, and, yeah. that, and, that, and the coach that they love so much, that they love playing for so much, they were like, we're not going to play good for you. Um, and they got him fired. Um, I will not be buying high on Ottawa stock next season. I can tell you that them finishing two points up on the Montreal Canadiens after this year is a joke. Uh, they got to give their heads a shake. The Montreal Canadiens deserve a ton of credit for how they played this year. Uh, the Ottawa Senators do not. And I was not a big fan of Detroit, but neither was neither were you two, so I don't feel sad. So uh, bad. I just want to do one more thing on the Sabres. Like, mm -hmm. th this will kill you, right? Tage Thompson, 71 games down from 78. 29 goals down from 47. 27 assists down from 47. 56 points down from 94. That's a killer. You're, you're dead. It's brutal. You're dead. I, I don't think I analyze the Atlantic Division preseason very well. I had Leafs, Sabres, Bruins, Lightning, 
Panthers, Sens, Canadians, Red Wings. And as right as I was about the Nashville Predators, that's how as wrong I was about the Detroit Red Wings. Um, if they just had a little bit better goaltending, if they didn't completely collapse as Dylan Larkin went out, like this team should have been in the playoffs. Yep. Like they should have had that second wild card spot. And I think um, I looked at their offseason acquisitions and Iserman, who it looked like he was trying to go for it, but I don't think he went for it in the right ways. I didn't believe in the team at all. And I, if, if like Huso isn't below 900 and Reimer and Lyon are just like mediocre, like the team is a lot better. And I think next, going into next year, I'm going to be a lot higher on the Red Wings. And I learned my lesson so, there. But here, here will be my question to you guys in October when we do these again, mm -hmm. which is do you buy the high end of the Sabres more than you buy the high end of the Red Wings? And I buy the high end of the Ooh, Sabres yeah. more than I buy the high end of the Red Wings. The question is, which team shows up? And the Red Wings showed up this year. The Sabres had a rough year. But I yeah. buy where the Sabres are going more than I buy are, where the Red Wings are going. As we saw it play out this season, even if those teams play like really well and they're exceptional and they're all their young stars show up, it still wasn't enough to supplant the four teams that we have. Yeah. Oh, my question, my response to that would be, even if they, even if the high end of those teams show up, is that enough to surpass uh, Toronto, Boston, Florida, Tampa? No, uh, barring some crazy injuries, I don't like, know. New, like New Jersey Devils type injuries. I don't think so. I don't. Know. We'll see what happens this summer, though. Yeah, could be a big, big, big summer. Well, Steve, uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm just I'm fascinated by it, and uh, you know, I was listening to some shows in the car, and I feel like what one of the I I don't know if this question's been answered. Um, so Utah, do you think it's to keep all the draft picks? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. No, no. Okay. No, yeah. I'm I'm just making sure. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Nothing about this situation is straightforward. So. Right, right, right. Um, the Coyotes like needed all that desperately. I think these guys are going to be spending those like drunken sailors. <laughs> I th I think. Oh, they want to bring a winning team. Firing those things around. Um, I I'll think I think it's um. It's not going to be your typical expansion off season. I think uh, that's a real, um, what is it, fly in the ointment? Well, who's going to be the cap dump team now? Right? I mean, it could still be them. I don't think No one look, plays for them. Look at this. Pierre Lebrun just got off the phone with Utah owner Ryan Smith, and he said updated total is now at 20,000 season ticket deposits. This is for an arena that right now will be between 11 and 12,000. I was then, like, wait. And in a, in a couple of years, they're going to get it up to 14,000, and I think just, there's an Olympic bid and a new arena on the way from the Ooh. Delta Center. So. Obviously, they're going to do a few upgrades and renovations, but it's going to be a few years. But it's not a perfect situation in Utah. No, it's not. But I think if he's going to be smart, and I think he is, mm -hmm. he's going to want to do the Bill Foley, which is be competitive immediately. Be good immediately. Yeah, I, I just don't think, um, you know, had the Coyotes not existed, had this not had this very unique situation not existed, I, I don't think Utah would be getting a team right now. No. I think they'd or, no, no. or maybe ever. Year, well, I think they'd be years away from it, but the NHL would be like, we like you as an owner. Mm -hmm. That's great. People like hockey here. That's great. Do you have an arena? No. Then why are we having this conversation? Yeah. Build well, an I arena, think that, they would have prioritized. There's a lot of chatter out of Houston. No one's paying attention. But right now in the Houston newspapers, there is there is chatter about the NHL. Uh, and there have been a, several reports. I think Houston is a real hot market. Uh, and Atlanta. I think those are the two. Clearly, Atlanta. There's like three bidders already for it. Right. Um, I mean, tell me how, if we were expanding the normal way, not moving a franchise, how Utah would beat either of those two markets. They wouldn't. I don't think. In terms would. of priority, they just mm -hmm. wouldn't. Flat out. And it's nothing against Utah. It's going to be an exciting it, time there. It's scale. I also think, exactly. I also think this guy, Ryan Smith, is... He's out to when I saw an interview with him yesterday, he's like, I what an opportunity you get to do this in your career. Like he is jacked to have this team. He's excited. And I think that is going to be cool because maybe he forces the management group to go, OK, you've co compiled all these draft picks. There's no way we can use them all. Mm -hmm. Was there 30? No. You can't have that many prospects in your system. What can we get? Were we supposed to do the Coyote segment? Because I had one last thing with the oh the preseason. Oh, stuff. do the oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, no. We, we were just chatting about the Coyotes, but we're not doing a segment. Okay. Um, last thing from Red Shark Pack, who also compiled the standings. Um, they did a average deviation and perfect picks and most underperforming, most overperforming from our uh, preseason picks. Oh. Um, so if we want to take a look here. 
Steve had the worst average deviation of his picks <laughs> at 1.688. Adam came in second, 1.625. And Grav and I, who did his picks in August. Good for him. Which is like, wow, credit to Grav. you for nailing it in August. We tied in our average de- deviation of where the teams actually finished at 1.438. I had seven perfect picks. Grav had 10. Adam had nine. Steve had five. And look at the most underperforming teams. All of us, <laughs> all four of us were the Devils. Three of the four of us were the Canucks. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, this is, uh, and then lastly, best division prediction. I had the Central. Uh, my average deviation was only 0.75. And worst division pre- prediction was Graf, uh Metro predictions, who were 2.25. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> not great, Graf. Um, these are This is some of the my favorite stuff we do on this podcast every year. I look forward to it every year. So uh, I can't wait till next preseason when we get to be wrong again. Because this is very hard to do. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I, man. I can wait. <laughs> uh, you're not excited you know what's I, I can do it I it's do it. it's funny that um that there are a lot of people in hockey in media that hate doing these because they're like oh i don't want to be wrong i don't know why you worry about that the whole fun of it is being wrong that's the most fun hey i i picked this because of this boy that was stupid boy i, I boy i didn't i didn't see this coming isn't that the fun no the fun for me is being right oh really oh, yeah, i like no, it like, i oh. like winning oh <laughs> <laughs> I also like winning. I'm I'm MJ battling the custodian in the corner for like five bucks, you know. <laughs> five, but it wasn't even that much. No. <laughs> like oh my god, Steve, uh, you hate this. What the predictions? Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, okay, okay. No, I thought I, you were one of the media types who don't no, like your predictions. No, too many <laughs> media types, and we're getting a changing of the guard. But too many yeah. guys are hell bent on being the always right experts Mm -hmm. and they fail anyway. Like it's, it's sports. Too many things happen. Just have fun with being right and have fun with being wrong. The more I'm wrong makes the times where I'm right funnier. The more times I'm right makes the times where I'm wrong funnier. Hubris is very fun. It's it's also (laughs) entertainment. Let's just have some it's fun. Empty. Yeah. Sports are fun. It says it up there, even though you can't see it on the camera. I, I was wrong <laughs> about a prediction. Like, who cares? Right. Like, being wrong about details is very different from being wrong. At, yeah, it's a prediction. It's sports with a, on ice with a rubber puck. Shit happens, man. Mm-hmm. The NHL, especially out of all the sports, is so random. It's like picking NHL teams to do something months in the future is so hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Here's the thing with BetMGM, guys. They are authorized partners of both the NBA and the NHL. And we're getting into the playoffs with the NBA. Jesse, Hmm. who do you like in the NBA playoffs? Let's get crazy here. I think one of the best first round bets right now is Knicks over 676ers because the Knicks are the three seed and they're going in as a underdog to win the series because a lot of people are hyped on the the Sixers and Embiid and Maxi and all that stuff. But I think the Knicks got it this year. You think they're going to do it? Yeah. With OG and Anobi. With OG. Come it's going to be so sad. Oh. In, in that series, Nick Nurse, OG, oh. like all the ex Raptors. Kyle Lowry is on the Sixers That's right now. Right. <laughs> Lowry, OG, oh. Nick Nurse, they're all there and they're not a part of the Raptors. It's so Stupid. But don't they not have <laughs> Julius Randle? They don't have him. He's done for the year. Yeah. Uh, no, thanks. I won't be taking that one. Oh, yeah. Steve, oh, yeah. yeah. You're out. yeah that's Steve. Dude, he's really good. <laughs> Listen, if you want exciting, state-of-the-art live tracking technology and dozens of sportsbook selections, BetMGM is the sportsbook for you. Tap in to every game on your mobile device. Get up off the sidelines and drive the basket or the net yourself. Oh. <laughs> no matter which team starts popping off, you'll find out why there's truly nothing like laying up a W. <laughs> you got all the buns in there. <laughs> With the king of sportsbook. I, hey, listen, somebody went to the trouble of p- putting all these amazing puns together. How could I not put them in the read? Visit betmgm.com slash dangle. Well, go to betmgm.com for terms and conditions, but go to betmgm.com slash dangle mm-hmm. to sign up. Must be 19 years of age or older, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. And if you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Ooh. When I was a young lad, I used to go to Blockbuster on Friday nights. We'd rent a movie Ooh. and my mom would get me a pack of hockey cards. Yes. Cool. And now over the course of that time, Plus, with donations from neighbors and stuff who knew I loved hockey, I collected over 2,000 of them. Wow. That's quite a few. And then I gave them to Steve. 
um, <laughs> as I got older, because I didn't need to keep moving them from place to place. Yes. I present to you today the rarest, the rarest hockey card. The rarest. Uh, this is a rookie card reserved for the league's first openly 2S LGBTQ plus player who has yet to make their debut. There are only 107 digital cards available, one for every year the NHL has existed without an openly 2S LGBTQ plus player. And with the Get Real movement, which we work with all the time, mm -hmm. uh, you go to rarestrookie.com now to bid on a card or donate to the Get Real movement. And the Get Real movement, by the way, is just such a fantastic organization. Um, we're trying to have... Uh, more openness in the game, and I think this card is a great way to start it. Now, Steve, yes, how many cards did you collect? A billion. Yeah, did you ever count them? No, when you were a kid. I remember no. counting mine. I was like, yeah, I got this many. Oh, because I, I thought that mattered. Far more likely to count them as an adult. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, uh, Jesse, did you collect cards? I did. I had a bunch of baseball cards. That was my thing, and I got them from like I don't think I ever purchased any. I like my mom got them from like a neighbor, a coworker, or something. I don't know how she got them, but I know she didn't buy them. It was like a giant box and like an old oh. chocolate box, and it was just a ton of baseball cards they're the best yeah. they're the best so check these out get real movement uh go to the uh the website rarestrookie.com to bid on your digital rookie card now okay so let's let's do this do you want to do the trivia or do you want to do the bracket first it's the bracket do you want to yeah, get we'll the bracket okay yeah all right gentlemen we're gonna do our playoff brackets right here right now oh, okay oh, damn i really wish i had a left <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'll, I'll, I'll show you mine. We, we're just yeah. gonna we're gonna we're not gonna like lock them in. You'll have to lock them in on your own later. I'm not mm -hmm. signing you into the okay. NHL website. Uh, I I've already shot my bracket video for okay. producer Drew, and uh, it took me till one in the morning. We're gonna start in the Western Conference, which uh, and I'm gonna work my way up. Um, the LA Kings and Edmonton Oilers have meet are, are going to meet in the first round for the third time in three years. Edmonton has won both times. Uh, starting with you, Steve, mm -hmm. what do you think about this particular matchup? Who are you taking? Don't uh, go too long because we have our playoff predictions and stuff, too. I know. Um, you know what? Kings are a good team. Oilers are better. Oilers in six. Jesse. Yeah, I'm also going to pick the Oilers, even though like I want to believe in the Kings. I don't. I think it's going to be three in a row. Yeah. What, what, how many games do you give it? Oh, uh, seven. You give it seven. Yep. I'm saying five. And the reason I'm saying wow. five is because I think that Van or Vancouver, I think Edmonton is better this year than they were last year. Unquestionably better. They play a style that fits them better. And I think the, the Kings are a little bit worse. I, I think that, you know, like I'm specifically pointing out, and this is a little unfair, and we'll talk about this in our previews, Pierre-Luc Dubois, it all which you don't have in, in Ayafalo and Velarde now. Yeah. And Jersey's not there. Not that he was a crazy part of their defense. He was uh, a part. I mean, he was a part of it. And he's played really well in, in Arizona. There's been some... some That that trade itself, like the Jersey trade, which was the preamble to the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, really had an effect. So much of it comes down to what version of Pierre-Luc Dubois shows up. Um, it, when murder becomes legal uh, in the playoffs, that is to his advantage. Like, there's a world where they could just staple him to Cro uh, <laughs> Crosby to uh, Connor McDavid mm -hmm. and make his life hell, and that makes the series interesting. If an unmotivated Dubois shows up, they're dead. Um, Vancouver, Nashville. What do we think? Nashville, who had a really surprising run, especially the back half of the year, they were spectacular. Yep. Vancouver, even more surprising because they were good the whole year. Yeah, and that's that's why I got the Canucks winning this series. Um, too many people have it in their head like, oh, Nashville's hot. Nashville's hot. They're they're coming into the playoffs hot. This is actually, I think, the coldest series. Um, one team has five wins in their last 10. The other has four. Um, Nashville's the one with four. Um, neither team is going into the playoffs playing their best hockey. Um, so tiebreaker goes to the team who's been good this whole time. I'm going to go with the Canucks in six. Jesse Blake. I've rode them the entire season and I'm not going to hop off the train now. I'm going to go with Nashville. Woo! Whoa! How many go how many uh uh how many games? Uh 7. 7 games. Let's go. No, 6. Whoa! Nashville Nashville and 6. Okay, now I I am as I told you I'm streaming these Canuck games and it's not just because I have an anti-Nashville bias, which I do. <laughs> You hate country music. I hate country music. And carry under. Whose bed have your boots been under? Not this bed, because I don't put stuff under my bed. I'm a clean person. Whoa. Um, more, more like Nashville 
zero I see because they're the only zero I see. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't even know if that made sense. Yeah, you, you're the only ten I see. Oh, you know, that one? Uh, you know what I mean. Stop it. It was a very um, good one. Uh, Vancouver, I'm going to give, I, I think Vancouver is going to win this series. Ultimately, I don't think it's going to be easy though. And the reason I say that is Nashville has a team of players that have consistently been to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, and Nashville is a team that consistently goes to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. There is something about playoff hockey, isn't there? And there are a lot of players on the Vancouver Canucks that have never seen a playoff game. Quinn Hughes, Pedersen. These are guys. See, some of these guys did in the bubble. Oh, in the bubble, but. Come it's, on. But it's different. Come on. It's, it's a different. little different. It's right? a lot different. Yeah. And and so it'll be fascinating. I think I'm a big believer in the Vancouver Canucks. I think they get it done in six. Mm -hmm. That's my okay. um Winnipeg, Colorado. What a matchup. What a matchup. And Winnipeg with home ice, too. Winnipeg with home ice, the coldest team coming into these playoffs is shockingly the Colorado Avalanche. Three wins in their final ten. I think it was three, five, and two. So we got to move a little quicker than we have it, and I'm I'm guilty <laughs> okay. of that. What do you pick? Uh, Jets uh, in six. Jesse. Yeah, we got whole previews. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, whole, ten minutes. Each. Yeah, we have to do ten minute previews. Um, Jets in seven. Jets in seven. I'm going Jets in six as well. Go Connor Hellebuck. And the last one and the most interesting car crash of the first round because that's what it all is. Dallas Vegas. How is Vegas a wild card team? Well, they don't care. And by the way. Uh, a whole bunch of reinforcements coming back, including Thomas Hurdle. Uh, looks like Mark Stone will be fully ready to go. Like everybody's going to be ready. In Dallas, the D stands for disrespect. They're going to teach everyone Dallas and seven. Jesse Blake. In Vegas, the V stands for very good. Uh, <laughs> Vegas and six. You're picking that over your guy, Ottinger? You're picking. Oh, that? yeah. No, I'm picking the Stanley Cup champions. Damn. The the biggest decor. You talk about decor, the biggest decor in the National Hockey League. Yeah. I'm take them. Yeah. Okay. Postseason hockey. Here's the here's the problem I have. This is ah! a, this one's a ah! war. I think it goes seven. And I'm gonna give the uh, I'm going with Dallas. Hey. I'm going with Dallas. Dallas and seven. Yeah. My you want to be on hurts. Adam's side? Welcome to the D high. <laughs> yeah. D high. <laughs> yeah. Maddie doesn't the like that. No, why not? Doesn't like the D high. Oh, oh, it's yeah. very good, yeah. though. All and right. It's very way, good, though. I'm excited for game one Predators Miners next year. <laughs> oh. uh, um, okay. No. Carolina and New York, as in the Islanders, a series of two Pokemon saying Harden. 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 What do we think? Just. Uh, Real quick, uh, producer Drew has not forgiven me for putting this in the group chat. Isles and seven. Um, I don't know the, the amount of games always screws me. Isles and six. What? Wow. Wow. I also think the Islanders. No way. That means we're gonna be wrong. I know. Yeah, Was well, it always me? Is yeah. it because it's me? I no. No. Most... Whenever the three of us agree on something, I'm like, that's oh, no way. I'm <laughs> stunned. I'm stunned I made it. You know it. why? I can't believe you guys did. I know, because Freddie Anderson's hot, but if Freddie gets injured and he's had health issues, there's a big problem. And that's my X factor. You I know. think because the Islanders have two great goalies. You know what's funny? What? Uh yesterday we did the video for this one and we'd made our picks. I don't know why you're shocked. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Did you forget we did that? That wasn't yesterday. That was two yeah. days ago. I can't remember. Days ago. Two days ago. I don't know how long ago that, that is yeah. in six week old baby <laughs> terms. Yeah. I don't remember that shit. 48 hours ago, I sat next to you and said the Islanders are going to win. No, that was... And you said the Islanders. No, I'm Rick James. That was weeks ago, mother... <laughs> I can't remember what I said, but I'm saying Islanders today. That's how I feel. You picked, the, you picked the Hurricanes. Did I? Yeah. I said the Hurricanes, and yeah. that's what I mean. You're a dumbass. You picked the Hurricanes. You're I don't fucking dumbass. remember. Which, which one are you picking? I'll go Carolina. If that was okay. my initial pick, that's, that's what, what I'm going with. I'm, video, I'm yeah. still worried about the goaltending, though. <laughs> hey, um, Adam, congrats on being right. New York, Washington. Um, I mean, I'm allowed to change my freaking mind. No, no you're you not. are. You are. I might change my picks from now to Saturday. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I won't. I have too much integrity. Um, <laughs> listen, the New York Rangers are ridiculous. The Capitals squawk in. Um, they weren't even good. Like down the final ten games, Rangers. Um, is this a four? Let's say is this uh, a four. No, I think it's really hard to do that in this league. I'll say five. Rangers and five. Jesse. Rangers in four. Um, yeah. I have been extremely disrespectful to the Washington Capitals, and I hope that I don't have a lot of egg on my face by the time uh, the series is over. And but uh, Rangers in four, New York, New York, baby. I'm glad somebody's got some balls because I don't. Rangers in five. <laughs> uh, I do think Washington steals one uh, just because. Um, but I, it's it. If there's a sweep to be had, this is the one that seems most likely as of now. Okay, let's go. The Florida Bowl. The Florida man. 
Uh, we got Tampa, we got Sunrise, and mm. we got a series. I'm so excited for these two teams to play. Uh, Florida obviously won the division. Tampa won the first wild card spot. It's not wild. It's just the seventh seed. But anyway, <laughs> what do we think about this series? Going to be a war. Panthers, Lightning, I just want you to know I hate you both. I hope the series goes seven. Ultimately, Panthers. Jesse. Uh, let's not forget that one team here went to three straight cups, won two of them. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in six. I say Tampa Bay Lightning in seven games, and I'm Ooh. most looking forward to Nikita Kucherov doing something about Bennett, Cousins, and Kachuk. You know what's funny? I'm pretty sure you picked Florida in the video. I picked Florida. <laughs> no, I mean Florida. What I meant so, is, no, I did pick Florida, didn't I? Yeah, you're hedging your bets here. <laughs> you know what's great is that when you wake up and you feel differently about things. I, I'll go with whatever I picked in the video. No, no, no. This is the new, like, we're, we haven't gotten to the playoffs yet. You don't have to lock in your picks. Right. What do you, what do you want? Which one do you want? Ah. Is Tampa too old, guys? Is Tampa too old? Is Tampa too old to take to take this kind of beating? Because it's going to be brutal. They're going to target Hedman so bad. It's going seven. Yeah, and Hedman's going to be very All right, sore. Fine, I'll go with my original pick, Florida. Why? Were you telling me why? speed it up? Hmm? Were you telling me speed it up? No, sorry, you're right. You're why? Right. Why, why are you picking Florida? Well, because I picked it in the video, and I should. No, I should. Be no, scared. I don't think no. you have to stick to that if you don't want to. It's How I'm feeling this morning is I'm like sound weird. I want Kucherov. <laughs> to freaking deal with these guys like like the maniac that he is. But I don't know that that's going to be entirely possible. When he harnesses it, he's the best player in the league. When he doesn't, he's a detriment to his team. <laughs> like, people forget that Columbus series. Uh, he gave up. He gave up in the series and filled his diaper to the brim and got suspended during winnable games where they could He did that in All-Star, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. As you gain in for more information, I think you're allowed to change your pick from Wednesday to today. So what is your official pick? Going younger. Play Florida, Panthers. Okay. Florida Panthers. Okay. Boston, Toronto. What do we think? Uh, I'm not even doing this for the memes. I hate that I'm doing this. I want to be wrong very bad. Boston in seven. <gasps> <gasps> you bastard. Why are you so shocked? Yeah, Leafs no. didn't beat them this year. J Jesse, um, we'll get into it in the actual preview, but uh, people are underrating how poorly the Leafs played down the stretch. Um, but Leafs in seven. Yeah! <laughs> you know That's what? not what you have in your actual bracket. I can see it. No, I, uh, let me click. There you go. <laughs> you stink! I you liar! <laughs> you liar! He just changed it! It says Leafs! It Leafs said in seven! I was... See, now you're putting back. things Put right. back. I didn't, I didn't do the full bracket yet. I'm still working through this. I'm moving things around. Here, guys. I had Winnipeg in the finals. Here, garbage. Guys, <laughs> Leafs in six. Well, in six? The last six. time the wow. Leafs and Bruins played in the playoffs was five years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. If you're carrying the scars around, me too, I get it. But at the end of the day, these are men now. And Ooh. I told you, this is the most consequential set of games the Matthews era will play. They're aware of it. They're going to do something about it. Leafs in six. Who was the last Leaf to score a series-clinching goal in Toronto? Because that's what they would have to do. Uh, Yannick Perot. I have no Joe Neuendijk. Oh. It was a long time. Oh, you said in Toronto. In Toronto. Because JT's was in yeah. Tampa. In Tampa. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And listen, it's playoff season. Uh, and you know, maybe it's actually technically not playoff season. This is the, this is the weird week before playoff season where players go down and get injured and yeah. you get sad. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't the ride. This is the line before the ride, Ooh. which I always thought is worse. That is, it is, especially way, way worse, especially if you, you need a little bit of a pick me up and listen, it's been a long winter. The economy's tough or, you know, sometimes it's just like, I'm sad and I'm a fan. Could be that too. Uh, for whatever reason you need therapy, we want you to give it a try with better help. Remember that you can get matched with somebody very, very quickly through this, a lot faster than other therapy. Uh, as well, uh, you can, you know, you could comment on, or you can talk to each other via text. Uh, you could talk via phone and you could talk via FaceTime. Uh, we want you to find your social sweet spot with better help. Visit BetterHelp today. Sorry, visit betterhelp.com today. BetterHelp.com slash SDP gets you 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Now let's do some end of season trivia, Jesse. What do you got there? Oh, yes. Give me a second to pull it up here. I, I will not. Be ready. Sorry. Man. 
Sorry about uh, the flip flopping on the picks, man. Some of these series are really close. Like, what are you going to mm-hmm. say? Don't apologize. Double. Yeah, and I think it's entirely fair for you to change your mind. No, not on Twitter. It's not. <laughs> I, I don't think you need to stick to um, what you picked from Wednesday to today. To, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Well. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's got a point. I don't know. This is the playoffs are always so hard because, again, it's like one injury can change. Like, okay, let's imagine Nathan McKinnon twists his ankle and is unable to play. That series is over. Right? Yeah. You know, like that. And that's the shit that happens. Right. And and I just I don't know. Jets in four. And by that, I mean, the Avs chance to win gets better because it's the playoffs and shit's weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shit's weird yeah and the way that you'll see it too the way that the games are ref from game one to like game four it changes so significantly and stays at the game four level the rest of the playoffs but they almost warm them into it the game one tight games always tightly called and then they start to loosen up the the strings a little bit i'm curious about how that's going to go this year all right so how would you guys like this to work i assume don't steve don't look over here dude i can't see that's okay uh, don't look don't i see. saw the bright logos i can't read <laughs> um how would you guys like to combine your heads on this trivia so we're doing so the first category is who finished in the top 10 in hits so do you guys want to try and name off <laughs> let's let's work together so okay. you give me it'd be faster 10 players and every point is uh somebody within the top 10 okay. right i think luke shen uh well, I think Luke Shen's teammate broke the hits record, Jeremy Lozon. Oh, okay. There's one. Okay. Or Jesse, are we? Are we yeah, yeah, go ahead. We can start. You, you don't think. Oh, the said? Isles, the Isles twins. Uh, with, yeah. With Clutterbuck and Martin. Well, and uh, whoever score keeps for the Islanders, too, because their hits are always super high. So, so Clutterbuck and Martin, there's mm-hmm. two picks. Mm hmm. Wasn't there one? Uh, I, let's go with Luke Shen. Yeah. I, I he's always right. in the top 10. He's, he's always there. Uh, was there not one for the Leafs? Was McCabe not in there? Oh, did Simone Benoit, Benoit play enough games? Mm. I think Benoit had more hits per game. Okay. But okay. I don't know if he played enough. This so far, like- you have Lozon, Clutterbuck, Martin, and Shen. Are those all right? No, I'm. Those. that's what you're submitting. Oh, you stink. Um, <laughs> uh, Steve's still competitive and tries to downplay. Radko Gudis? <laughs> He's like, no, oh, it matter if it that's a right. really good. Okay, Ducks. Gudis, because he's a maniac, and also the Ducks never had the puck. That's right. You know what? We're thinking, we're looking at good teams. We got to stop that. Yeah, Gudis, I think, has got to be in there. Okay. Are we putting him on that list? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gudis, no, please. Gudis, Radko, yeah. <sighs> Who played a shitload of hockey? Zach Wierenski did, but I don't really think he like that's how I'm going to start putting a time limit. Yeah, we got to go quick. Yeah, you're the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, somebody from Florida, so, Panthers. Simone Benoit. Um, 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 Kulikov. I don't know. I'll say if you get Ryan Lombard. There you go. If Ryan you get fifty percent, that is a point. Okay, Ryan Lombard. Brady Kachuk. Yep. And is that what's that put us at? Uh, so you got Lozon, Clutterbuck, Martin, Shen, Gudis, Benoit, Lomberg, Kachuk. You need two more. Uh, defenseman from the Sens, Ooh. I guess. No. No, yeah, I don't right. think they hit. Would Den- Would uh, David Savard be in there? Uh, screw it. Yeah. Okay. Let's go David Savard. Savard. One more. Uh, Jake Truba? <laughs> oh, good one. Okay. Jake Truba. Okay. All right. If you, <laughs> if you get five out of ten, that's a point for this round of okay. victory. The correct top ten. Lowe's on. We got him. Garnet Hathaway. Shucks. Oh, Bra- the Flyers. Brady Kachuk. Yeah. Got two. Keegan Colasar. Oh. oh. Wow. Cal C- Clutterbuck. Got hey. him. Evander Kane. Oh. oh. Simone Benoit. We got him. Dakota Joshua. No. Michael Pozzetta. Oh. No. That is four out of ten. You have failed this round. How far were we? Like, was one of our picks eleven? Uh, I don't have the. Oh, you have the cap. Yeah. You stink. Damn. All right, next one. Jeez. You stink, dude. Pizzetta was sixty-one games, and he's in the top ten. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Uh, wow. Next up, we will do which player? This is a singular answer. If you give me the player. You get a correct point. You get to combine your heads and submit a player. Which player played the most games this NHL season? Oh, and uh, Sean Monaghan. Right, because he had 83. 83, Sean Monaghan. Which is 
uh, we all thought he was cooked, like his playing days might be over, and it's then a, he plays 83 games. Amazing what he's that, doing. That is so many games. <laughs> yes. Plus one. That is legitimately so many. Wow. All right. Next, we're doing post-hit. I want three of the top five. Matthews. Oh, Matthews by like a mile. Uh, who's a high Who's a high percentage? Like who should... Was someone... Why do I feel like Tyler Sagan's on the list? Well, if you think he's on the list. I'm going to say Tyler Sagan for some reason. I don't uh, really know why. Um, I'm going to say Pasternak, don't you think? <laughs> I'm going to say Steven Stamkos. Okay, Steven Stamkos. Okay. You could say Pasternak. Okay, so that's four. Oh, how many guesses do we get? So I want, th- uh, like, to win, you'll, three of the you'll top five. give me three of the top five, so submit your top five. Uh, no, yeah, so let's do that. Pasta, Stammer... Uh, Matthews. Matthews, say again for some reason. Mm-hmm. We need one more. Zabanajad. Zabanajad? <laughs> yeah, he he had like twenty six goals or something like that. He should have way more. Okay, let's see. Huh. Your your selections are pasta. Yep. Stammer. Yes. Matthews. Yes. Sagan. Yes. And DJ Zbed. Zabinajad. The actual top five are Matthews, yeah, Wyatt Johnson, oh. Connor McDavid, oh. Pasta, and uh. Troy Terry. Troy you got, Terry. You got two of the top five. Ah, Damn it. Uh, rounding out the top ten, Kaprizov, Rantanen, Forsberg, Trocek, and Dylan Gunther. Hmm. Dylan Gunther. I thought I thought um, McDavid would have been a free square. It should have been. I thought you would have went Matthews, McDavid, Pasta. Well, should have done that. Yeah. I don't know. I just always imagine when McDavid shoots that it goes in. Yeah, I, I, I've never seen him miss. Yeah, uh, they uh, Matthews led it with fifteen. Wyatt Johnson, McDavid, and Pasta all had thirteen. Wyatt Johnson was second, even though he had fucking thirty-two goals. <laughs> oh shit, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a, a lot really more. good player, man. Yeah, Matthews had three OT winners. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have. Damn. Let's see. Next trivia on the time on ice. Time on ice. Okay. Aaron Portsline was talking about Zach Wierenski being a big minute eater. So let's go there. Okay. We're going to do once again. I want three of the top five. And they got to be playing like 25 minutes. You know what? Time. No. Two of the top five. Oh, wow. Two of these guys. It's That's how not obvious it is. That's I would have how... thought like a Quinn Hughes would be in there. I think you guys are going to fuck this up. Wow. <laughs> wow. He, he's he's challenging us now. I got no faith. Based on how this is gone, I got no faith. Charlie McAvoy. Okay. And I'll tell you why. He's the number one defenseman on the Bruins, and they led the league in overtime games. Okay, so Charlie McAvoy and who were the other? Who's the uh, other person? I might even say Lindholm. Hampus Lindholm. Lind- Both of them? Uh, okay. Maybe. They're going to, by the way, they're going to be the team up pair that goes against the math. I line. know it sucks. Uh, so McAvoy and Lindholm, mm-hmm. uh, Zach Wierenski. Okay. I was thinking not Quinn Hughes. No, maybe not. Uh, let's go Quinn Hughes. And for me, it's down to Kale McCarr or Victor Hedman. Oh, right. And now this is average ice time or total ice time? Total. Like cumulative. So if they've been injured. Ice. Yes, they would not be. You're done. Yeah, Uh, I'll give you this. Four of the top five guys played 82 games. Oh, you stink. (laughs) I well, okay. So Hedman did not. So that takes him off. Yeah, there's a. I don't remember if is this an injury? Is this a Kale Maker injury season or not? I don't know. What about the Montez? No, it's Kale McCarr. What are we doing? Right? Yeah, but if if he was injured, then we're screwed either way. Roman Yossi done. Oh, Yossi. All right. Your picks are McAvoy, Lindholm, Wierenski, Hughes, and Yossi. And out of those five guys, you got zero. Oh, <laughs> man. <What are> <laughs> the official time on ice standings. Top five. Oh, are Hughes. <laughs> John Carlson, Drew Doughty, oh, Mike Matheson, Rasmus Dahlin, and Brock Faber. Brock That's the top five. Man, Faber. what a season Brock Faber had. Mm-hmm. Does he win rookie of the year? He probably ought to. I don't. Chris Latang. I don't think you can. I think you got to give it to Bedard, right? Yeah, I know. But Brock Faber, Brock Faber should. So yeah. Okay, good. we haven't gotten to the Dubas quotes yet. I don't know if we're doing that today. But he's like, oh yeah, Latang was playing through something significant all year. Mm-hmm. He was sixth in total ice time. 
That's crazy. Yeah, rounding What's the up the matter with you? Rounding out the top 10 after Faber, it's Latang, Hughes, Yossi, Carlson, Fowler. Who knew Cam Fowler was still playing that much? Yeah. This this makes the Dubas thing today so much more frustrating. That's like that's insanity. <laughs> you you played a an old injured player the sixth most out of anybody in the entire league. What's wrong with you? They're yep. trying to win. Oh, that's so stupid. Yeah. That's so dumb. That's really dumb. All right. Last one. And then to cap it, we'll play point a game with the official who finished with a point a game. Okay. So that'll be fun. And that'll be uh, the you two against each other. So we'll do top 10 in goalie wins. Or top five, I should say. If you get three, that means you get a victory this round. So far, you guys are, what is it? One, Not good. One for five? One for four? <laughs> uh, Connor Hellebuck. No, two because you got uh, what is Sean it? Monahan. What's the stat ask again? Uh, goalie wins. Uh, Connor Hellebuck. Yes. And um, who else played six? Alexander games? Georgiev. Yeah. They, oh, they played. He played so many games. He, okay. he didn't stop a lot of pucks, but he won a lot of games. Okay. Um, so I'll say those two. Now, who won a lot of games? I mean, there's the Rangers. Quick played a lot, but like surely Shesterkin's up there. He's got to be. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Hang on. <laughs> Soros must have won like all those. I were those I would put Soros during in were Georgiev and Hellebuck your two official picks so far. Yeah, those are official. Okay. I would put Soros in there. Okay, Soros number three. Would Demko be in there or was he injured too long? Ooh, ooh yeah, he missed a lot of time. I feel like yeah, probably not Jake Ottinger either. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, odd question. Would Stuart Skinner be in there? Oh. Because yep. who won games for them? Stuart Skinner. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So Stuart Skinner. And who's five? Who's five? Otter? No. That wasn't Otter. official? No. Not Otter. Not Otter. Okay. What, what, what about uh, Florida? Bob? Vasilevsky maybe too? No. He missed too much time. He did miss a lot of time, but then he came back but and then, then he won a bunch played of shit. almost all their games. Yes. Vassy. Okay. And Vassy? Okay. So, your official, I'm asking for three out of the top five. Your official picks are Hellebuck, Georgiev, Saros, Skitter, and Vassy. The actual top five are Georgiev, Hellebuck, Bobrovsky, ah! Shesterkin. Do we pick him? I no. I don't think we did. We talked and about him. Oh, we're stupid. Stuart Skitter. Oh! We did get three of the five there <laughs> let's go if you want to bring it up there you uh, go that is the top 10 rounding out oh, after Otter. skinner Look we have demko soros ottinger vassy binnington binnington yeah because he played uh, a lot of games more like 55 winnington. starts 28 wins hey wow so you got three of those categories that's not too that's bad. not bad three of six i think Where? Yeah, I'll take it. Man, all right. None of ready? these guys played 70 plus. Broder hates them all. We Are you anymore? guys ready for point a game? This will be oh, our I'm last. Oh, I'm ready for point a game. Okay. Our last recap of the season uh, trivia. So point a game this year is bonkers, by the way. There's yeah. some crazy weird performances. In total, there are 45 players who finished with a point a game. And now this includes everybody. If you played one game and you scored one point, you are a oh, point a game. Get out of here. There are 45 guys you can pick from. And how this game works, if you're not familiar, if you've never heard us play this before, Steve and Adam go back and forth. They name a player and that player must be a point of a game. And if they are not, you are eliminated and the other guy wins. So who wants to go first? You got a free square with a lot of guys. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. Austin Matthews. Well done. Nathan McKinnon. Well done. Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner. Well done. Oh, you, s <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to, you want to know how close you were? 85 69. He was uh 1.23 points per game. Yeah, not even close. Go Kucherov. On. Yep. Uh William Nylander. William Nylander, correct. 1.20. All right. Actually All right. below Marner in terms of his points uh, per game. Pedersen. Uh Elias Pedersen is 1.09 points per game. He is 89 Dude. in 82. I feel okay. You go, <laughs> you're going... I'm hugging myself a little hard. He's number 24 <laughs> of 45. Uh, no matter what Evolving Wild says, Sidney Crosby. 
What do you Sydney mean? Crosby. You Remember, he's things. like, wait, yes. there's still games left. How did he lock in a point per game? <laughs> 94 in 82, Sydney Crosby. Yeah. Okay. Adam Wild, you're up. There's, a, there's still a couple of free squares, you guys. I know, but when you're asked oh. this, when you're <laughs> asked this, wait, it, it's sort of, did we? No, yeah. It's just, say it. Go, go, go. <laughs> Pasternak. Thank you. That's one. Did we not say Connor McDavid? You haven't said McDavid yet. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. It's hard Connor to keep Connor McDavid. Of... Okay. All right. So you got Pasta, you got McDavid. Yeah. Leon Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl is 1.31. Yeah. 106 points in 81 games. That's amazing. You, you said Kucherov, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, or Temi Panarin. Panarin is uh, 1.46 points per game. 120 and 82. Adam Wild, you're up. Here. Now it's now it's a little, they're getting a little sticky. Uh, There's a lot scary. of top guys in the NHL left. A little scary. Yeah. Brock Besser. Brock Besser. Oh, let me. He see. Scored a lot of goals. I don't know if he got the assist. Oh no! Uh, oh no! I think we might have a losing. Oh pick no! There. Yeah. Uh, no. Adam. He had Forty goals. I didn't see him on the list. No. The assist there. Damn it. Brock Besser was seventy-three points. Oh, in oh game. yes. Sorry, guys. Steve Dangle wow. wins point a game. And let's uh, bring up the players who were point a game this season. Who is the least amount of games? Yeah. Game? That's what, I had that's some I really dumb picks for if we got deep. Uh, if we want to go through some of the bigger names you didn't pick, JT Miller, Granted, oh. Kaprizov, uh, Jack Hughes, Kale McCarr, Jake Gensel, Sam Reinhart, Gensel. Philip Forsberg, Sebastian Ajo, Quinn Hughes, Braden Point, Matthew Kachuk, Barkov, Eichel, Robert Thomas. Oh, there you go. Robert Thomas. Roman Yossi, Stamkos, Larkin, Adam Fox, Evan Bouchard, 82 and 81. <laughs> Jesper Brat, 83 and 82. Oh, now, now it's the fun. And one. then we got some of the fun guys like Brad Lambert, who was one and one. Lane Hudson was oh, yeah. two and two. Uh, Cutter Gauthier, Flyers one and one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Some of the other names. Kirby Doc was two and two. Uh, uh, Aku Ratu. Hey. Ratty? Hey, hey, he, Ratu. Ratu, yeah, he right? Made his uh, debut. One and one. Those are some of the other fun names. Dude, Luca Del Bell Blues. Yeah, one and one. He was a point a game. <laughs> who was the guy who scored last night for Calgary? Uh, he was so excited. Um, I don't even know. I don't know. Oh, hang on. I'll look it up. It's so funny because I think Mackenzie Weger after the game was like, he was like spitting in my face. He was so excited that he'd scored. I scored at the NHL level. What was his name? Hang on. I'm going to look it up. Uh, his name is Luca. A Adam Klapka. Oh, Adam Klapka scored. Yeah. He's yeah. He's huge. He was, uh, I want to say he was under <clears throat> AHL contract with the Marlies. Oh, okay. Uh, was in the devil system for a while. Why do I know about this guy? <laughs> anyway, good for him. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, damn, Jesse, that's a hard game. Yep. Well done, Steve. All right. Well done, Steven. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> oh, I wanted to win. <laughs> yeah. I Just know. so you guys know, um, to add to the Utah potential names, mm -hmm. we've got uh, these were the names that were filed with the applications office. We got the Blizzard, Utah Blizzard, Utah Fury, Utah Hockey Club, Utah HC, Utah Venom, and just just filed mm. a few minutes ago the Utah Yeti. Oh, let's go. Uh, a lot of people are looking for Utah outlaws as well. I like outlaws. Why? Outlaws would be cool. Well, that's the West, you know, the outlaws. I feel like that's more like Arizona. Would I feel like, like that Texas. too. Texas. Yes, I agree. Yeah. But outlaws is a cool name. What about what about the Rough Riders, guys? <laughs> the Utah <laughs> Wildcats. <laughs> I, I thought people were way too hard on the Utah names. Like I think they always are. I like that. You know their basketball team's called the Jazz, right? Yeah, yeah, because they took them from New Orleans and they never changed the name. Yeah, it's weird to me <laughs> that they're like, "Oh yeah, we're just gonna go into next season without a name." Like, oh, why are you being so picky about this? Your basketball team is the took a, a team and, from somewhere uh, else and was just like, "Ah, they're the Jazz." Yeah, they're yeah. the Jazz. That's a thing for New Orleans. So specifically, they named it after that city, and you took it and said, "You know what? No changes." The, and the the Los <laughs> Angeles. Should we change it to Oceaners? Nah, it's that's, still the that's one of them. That's right up there. It's just as it's egregious. Literally, like calling them the Quebec City Englishmen. Like it's it's just yeah, such a they, weird. They name. took the Minnesota <laughs> Lakers and they said, you know what? There are no lakes here, but let's take it. The Florida Landlocks. <laughs> like what the? F uh, it's yeah. no. It's I, I like the Venom. 
Uh, you could do better than the Blizzard. It's not that bad. The Yeti is a very popular pick. Mm -hmm, yeah. And honestly, I think part of the reason that patent or whatever copyright yeah. was filed is because that's what so many people were calling for. Mm. And I mean, the logo is built in. Make it a Yeti. I think people need to take a step back and realize that all the names of pro sports teams are kind of dumb. There's, yeah, there's three Canadian teams that are just named different versions of Canadians. Like the, the Canucks. <laughs> the Canadians. The Canadians. No, the Habitants are not Canadians. They're people that came to Canada. Uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll be, yes, I know. It's Canadians with an E. Oh, we got, and the, uh, the, uh, the Flames. And then we got the Senators. No. Oh, yeah. Like that. I think that's kind of a Canadian. Like, I don't know what I no, said. They're, that, very, they're very open about the fact that it's like Greco Roman. Oh, is it? Yeah. I yeah. assumed it was something to do with Canada and like we have senators or something. The I don't dude know. with the golden helmet and the red shit. I don't I don't know. That's yeah. I don't know. Well, he that, looks like Dion Phaneuf. And that's what, by the <laughs> way, I want to say this. Senators would have never have worn that headdress because senators didn't fight. Shut Sen up. They would have been wearing purple togas. Yeah, that's what the senators should be doing. The Ottawa <laughs> Spartans didn't make quite as much. Sense. I think I would not, wouldn't be Spartans. It'd be like, like, like they had like the, they had cool names for these, like Hastati, Triarii. Praetorian Guard. Oh, they could yeah. have gone with any of them. The Ottawa Praetorian Guard. You're right. <laughs> Senators they went with. You freaking nerd. Uh, yeah, right. Toronto <laughs> is a leaf. Like, that's stupid. Yeah. No, yeah. Maple Leafs, I guess, is the full name. Or the Maple Leafs. Well, it's well, named that... after an army division. It's still a peculiar name for an army division. Yes. Yeah. Like, Especially Leafs. All, all names are kind of dumb when you just read them. Now, wouldn't it be <laughs> sick if it is the Yeti and, like, they have a Yeti as their mascot? Mascot. How sick would that be? Just a gigantic Yeti walking through there. Come on, that'd be so much fun. And uh, it just rolls well, the Utah Yeti. Mm -hmm. It's, I really like it. Now, the plural of Yeti is Yetis with an S on the end of it. Is it? I, apparently it is, according to Greg Wyshynski. Um, So it would be, I still feel like we'd call it the Yeti, but I thought, but no, I, I think they got Yetis? the S. Yetis? Yetis. Utah Yetis? It just yeah. makes sense that Yeti would be a plural and a singular as well. I don't understand why we have to put an S. I think both work. Yeah. Anyway, both work. Now, maybe there's like a bunch of Yetis running around the arena. Oh, and yeah. they're and they're they're coming at you. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think you got to do S. You got to do the Utah S. Yetis. Yetis. Yeah. Utah Yetis, and then um, just to really really rub it into Arizona, it's the Yetis. You got to do a whiteout. <laughs> well, Winnipeg does a whiteout too. Yeah, because yeah, it was That's stolen <laughs> from them. <laughs> We should, I want to take a moment just to acknowledge that you can leave the franchise uh, history in a city. Yep. Thanks, yep. thanks Howard NHL, Howard NHL for consistently moving all of the history from each city and then one day deciding, you know what? Nah, with Arizona, we're leaving it there. Give it back to Winnipeg. Yeah, no, actually, what you can do is literally just uh, leave it in the city and in the building and shut the lights off. And then yeah. chain down like, uh, the retirement banners in a garbage can. So we have to talk about that. I did want to bring that up sure. today. It wasn't in a garbage can. But. It's kind of nuts that the Coyotes left their arena and didn't bring Shane Doan's retirement banner. And the banner guy on Twitter gave it to him, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was wondering if it was because they didn't pay their bills and they couldn't come collect their shit until they paid their bills. Uh, How did that happen? I don't know. How does that happen? I don't know. Uh, I mean, Shane Doan didn't do anything to them. You know no. what I mean? I don't, I don't know if... I mean, there are people who are that petty, but I, I doubt... Um, I doubt they were. Steve uh, made fun of me for saying they left it in a garbage can. Can we pull up this headline? <laughs> the coyotes left shane doan's banner in a garbage can is the headline wow so, oh. i didn't think that was the case uh okay. the, it's a shame for the uh one to read the actual thing uh from when they when the coyotes were evicted from gila river arena in 2022 they left some things behind in their old arena of the lot the banner honoring the retirement of shane doan and what we learn is that when they got a call to pick it up they did nothing the result, the banner was thrown in the garbage. No. And Sebastian Goulet spoke to BPM Sports this morning wow. and talked about uh, how they got it back. So <laughs> I don't know who threw the banner in the garbage, but I'm sure anyone in Quebec who found a uh, banner would have kept and donated it. That's not. So that's besides the point. He's going on Quebec uh, to get a city and all that stuff. Um, listen, I anyways, cannot believe I cannot believe that. Best case scenario, the Coyotes get their team back. Uh, best, best case scenario. Um, Alex Morello makes a decision 
not too long from now to put his pride aside and leave this team alone for somebody who can do it. I, I got to say... He can't do this. Um, we should have had our antenna up a little earlier on this when Shane Doan... Who the fuck is we? Well, when Shane Doan specifically said, you know what? I've been the Coyotes like ambassador and working my way up in the community. Screw all that. Let me move to Toronto. Uh, like we should have been once when Shane Doan doesn't isn't working in the organization anymore. We should have been like, OK, all bets are off. I don't need an apology for the way some people talked about our coverage of uh, the Coyotes and their ownerships and competence. But I would appreciate one. I'm just throwing that out there. You're not talking about from fans. Uh, <laughs> Are you a little were we about? were we being unfair about all the stuff that we were so fucking right about we weren't making it up um canadian media you know hey i wanted to ask you guys about this um the uh, there's a there's a lot going on in the nhl mm -hmm. and obviously there's a lot of post-game stuff happening or postseason stuff happening right now so the reason i'm not going to dive deep into the penguins or dive deep into what the devils are i think are talking right now uh, although tom fitzgerald did say uh, in the 29th minute of his press conference yesterday that uh, he, he's expecting that the players are going to wear suits next year and that's going to help instill team. Oh, yeah. It was only a matter like of time. Fart. The Devils uh, do poorly for long enough. They're like, you know what we're missing? All the stuff looted. Yep. Uh, this is so we're not going to get into any of that stuff because I haven't had the chance to kind of go through it and, and maybe we don't get into it because Sunday we're having a show and it's going to be post a whole bunch of mm -hmm. playoff games. But uh, the L.A. Clippers have introduced the ultimate wall pass for fans, providing access to their new fan section in the Intuit Dome, meaning that you like the Leafs don't have I've always advocated for the Leafs to have a fan night, meaning that you tell all the season tickets subscribers. Sorry, guys. You get 40 games instead of 41, and we're going to open this up to fans for one game a year, right? And and just let them, let, and then you win a lottery, and you pay a fixed price, and it's not outrageous. Zero and, shot, but continue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so here's what you get. For $1,299, expensive. $1,300. You get 41 home games. Not so expensive. For the Clippers? Yeah. Wow. Uh, seats based on arrival timing. So there's a limited amount of seats, but if you're there early... With your pass, you can go. Early fans can make can sit as close as row three, and you can make a sit with friend um, reservation. So the basically the idea here is going off of what they do with European football, which is there are dedicated and, and MLS does this too, which is they have dedicated sections at lower prices for fans so that they'll come in and blow up flares and wave yeah. flags and get absolutely crazy, and they set the tone for the rest. of of the people coming because they're the ones that get the chance going. Dude, that's 32 bucks a game. It's amazing. <laughs> that's really good. Well, and I think they're counting on those people to um, uh, to buy food and drinks and that sort of thing. But when you look at the artist rendering of it, um, it's basically, you know, when you're, when you're staring at a basketball uh, net, um, it's going to be this side and this side of the, of the net. So you're going to see, they're going to be the oh, on side. the corners. So they're going to, okay. they're going to be the ones chanting on the home side. For the entire game. And I think that the idea is to attract the hardcore lunatic fans, which is how you create an atmosphere. Very interesting. I'm excited to see how this goes. I don't know enough about LA to say whether or not that'll work. They're pretty loud. I know they're pretty loud. Like it's the a the thing ridiculous is they, place. Lakers, though, you know, because they have so many stars, that's really the draw. It's like they, you know, when they made, when, when the Lakers were taken over in the early 80s, that was part of the point was bring the stars and they started a nightclub in the uh in the old um i forget what it was called the forum um and they had the forum club where celebrities would hang out with the players after the game and they'd have drinks and whatever um and the whole point was to make that form valuable for things other than basketball so it could be profitable um i don't know if the clippers have quite, quite the same run do you know what i'm saying no like, they gotta they, they had a shitty owner for years outside of winning a championship they gotta find a way to not be the other basketball team in la yeah i mean originally they were in san diego but donald sterling oh well LA. they should have stayed there great city <laughs> never been but I just wonder, great things i wonder what you would th think about like the leafs doing something like that take one section let the hardcores buy it and be there every game and literally be like a fan supporter. I Set worry that people would find a way around it. 
You know, I feel oh. like I feel like people would, I feel like they could control it in L.A. somehow. But I feel like in Toronto, people would kind of be sleazy about it and find a way around it to make money and like resell it to people. And then it end up just another suit section. The, I don't know. I'm that, skeptical on us. That fan game Adam's talking about. My first thought was tickets for that game will be more expensive than a regular game. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I wish there was a way around the scalping part of it. Or uh, it's so bad here. Like yeah, the resale scalping. of these like Leafs tickets, it's insane. Well, it's like every time I see that dope and is uh, you know with who owns like a bunch of seats, who always wears whatever the other so arena. He it, like listen. He has thirty one jerseys and none of them are for the Leafs. Yeah, and he yeah. can listen. He could. He's everybody's right. He can do what he wants. But it was one of those where it's like, yeah, okay, but like you can sit there and defend a scalper all you want <laughs> or he's a, or he's a dope. And, and I, I think he's a dope here. I'm, I'm going to issue a challenge. Sportsnet. Stop. Stop putting him on TV. He loves it. Oh, <laughs> every time the Leafs play against another team, there's other fans of that team. Yeah. It's Toronto. There's fans of every team. Stop showing that guy. What's he paying you? No, he stop. He sits in, intentionally in sections where the cameras are. What have they got? One. Well, they got two or three, but one well, of the fan he, cam- he has his seats. He know? has his like, seats has intentionally seats. in an area where he will be seen. No, I know. That's the point. <laughs> Every time they put him on, like it's 2024. We're all like, there's the guy. There's that extremely strange man. <laughs> put someone else on. It, it, stop it. Why are you yucking someone's yum? Because this is his what? yum <laughs> is yuck. Oh, he shows up. Oh, and look his, at that. I, Jesse, you see how fast I had that shit? He shows up and but like it'd be one thing if he was cheering for his team. He's not. He shows up and goes, yuck! Yeah. At all of you, yuck. Yeah. You're all you, yucky. That's that's why I'm yucking his yum because his yum is to yuck my yum. You're right. He's the one walking into the building yucking Leafs fans yum. It's yeah. extraordinarily yeah, yeah. weird behavior. It is. No, like I'm, I was just asking you just, uh, to answer your to ask you the question. You have answered it perfectly. Yes, like I know. I feel like <laughs> there's no way to control it though. I if you're MLSC. No, 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 no. To take his money. That's the, that's the thing. Go that to the sucks. game. Go to the game. I it's think, fine. Stop putting them on my table. That was, that was the original thing uh, we were hit. Oh, I wanted to hit on is the resale ticket and the exorbitant price, the crazy prices and having a guy sit there, cheer for the other team. There's no way for MLSC to control this stuff. I right know. Now. It I sucks. Know. I don't spend your money. However, however, you don't have to put them on TV every time, you know, mm-hmm. Get, let someone else have some fun. Mm-hmm. There are other fans. There will be other Boston there. fans in attendance. Yeah, <laughs> That's man. What you're saying, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> I know. What are, what and actually, doing? probably real Boston fans because he's a Canadians fan yeah. from Montreal. So well, he, it's always for like the Panthers because like there's not a ton of Florida Panthers. Yeah, fans here. yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Anyway, just leave us alone. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was a cool idea by the Clippers to create some atmosphere in their area. So uh, that that'll be fun. By the way. Before we get to uh, uh, the press conference here, did want to let you know that it looks like TJ Brody will not dress in game one, wow. ah. which is the right thing. If you have, people are like Brody, a Labushkin over Brody is a is a crime is one of the responses to Jonas Siegel tweets. I'm like, you've been watching. You can't put him in. You can't. Come you can't. Um, uh, Riley Labushkin, yeah. Benoit McCabe, yeah. Edmondson Lilligren. We won. That's exactly what we wanted. We won. And but by the way, Brody will play. He will yeah. play. He's going I, to play. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Oh no, he's playing. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just. Listen, they have so many bodies. Like he's gonna get in. Do we got the forwards? Uh, we don't have the forwards as of yet. Interesting. I can. Uh, well, I'll, I'll see if I can pull them. Uh, the one hockey thing I yeah. did want to hit on before we get to the pref- press sure. conference was Jacob Trick- Chikrin in the Sens uh, post. Yeah, uh, post season uh, media avails. This was from Claire Hanna, uh, TSN reporter. Jacob Chikrin asked. If Ottawa is the place he wants to play the next couple years, his response, it's a tough question. I don't know. I honestly have not thought about that. I know I have one more year left on my contract. There haven't been talks of an extension or anything, so I haven't got my head wrapped around that idea. It's tough to sit here and act like I have. Take it day by day and see if and when we have those talks and go from there. And it looks like, based on how this is trending, the Ottawa Senators are about to give up two top 12 first round picks Damn. for Debrinkit and Chikrin for one and a half year rentals for both year, both guys. And 
Chikrin, it doesn't seem like, wants to stay in Ottawa long term, and that sucks because they gave up a bunch of assets for him. Of all the guys who have ever been gone, he's so gone. <laughs> he's been gone since he got there, though. Like he he was not speaking. Oh, I think he was on board. I think there was. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This isn't Debrinkit. This isn't Debrinkit. 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 This is Debrinkit. Debrinkit. Whereas whereas like he that dude never never wanted to be there. Whereas he Chicken, wanted to be in Detroit the whole time. Yeah, and <laughs> Chicken was like, "No, I'm down with this whole sense thing. I think he's from the area." Yeah, he is. Um, it hasn't worked out. It's been terrible. It's it seems like he tested it out and was like, "This isn't for me." Not my monkey. I mean, they also stink. Not my monkey. <laughs> like, yeah, they also they weren't good. They yeah, stink. And like yeah. they're oh boy. Yeah, they're going to be able to get a lot for him, but I I feel bad for him because I yeah? think he's stuck there until next trade deadline. Are you? I will say this: is this is now the time to cash your chips on the Ottawa Senators? I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard a player. Well, he did have the qualifier in there that he's he acknowledged that he's under contract for next season. Mm -hmm. But asking a guy who's under contract for next season, do you want to be here long term? And saying, you know what? I don't know. All he had to like say was, I'm under contract the, and I'm not. We haven't talked extension. The writing is just plastered on the wall that he wants out. Yeah. What, what's what's his trade protection? Uh, Jacob Trick Chikrin modified no trade clause. Let's see how many teams. Ten team no trade list. Mm, yeah, that's okay. I was gonna say if it's full no move, get comfy, Jake. It's also you're not going nowhere. It's like a really good deal. Four point six million dollars. Like somebody will uh, somebody will take that. And if we wanted to refresh our mem memories about the trade, it was a first round pick, which uh, became the twelfth overall pick, uh, and a second round pick which became the 48th overall pick and another second round pick in 2026 uh, wow. for Jacob Chikrin to Ottawa Senators or to Arizona. Coyotes, I wonder if sorry. he'll get traded to Utah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that'd be so up, funny. If they're trying to pick up like young stars, wouldn't Jake Chikrin make a lot of sense for them? Mm -hmm. um, we need, I I want him to stay here, but if Shane Doan went and worked for Utah, that'd be funny <laughs> because then you would have the only possible person to work for all three of the original Winnipeg Jets, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Utah Yeti. Uh, as the, the line, by the way, as of right now, they just posted them. Bertuzzi, Matthews, Domi, Nyes, Tavares, Marner. Interesting. That must mean McMahon is hurt. Robertson, Holmberg, Yarncroke, Dewar, Kampf, Reeves. No. Nylander? Nylander is absent for the. No. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. He might just be tired um Cade that's Weber also dressed. <laughs> Cade Weber also dressed and yeah that's weird he will uh, be their 10th defenseman yeah he signed a contract he's about to burn a year on it um and I, I, it's it's essentially a one-year deal yeah they're saying McMahon is injured Nylander is absent huh absent wow interesting yeah. it might just be that they're they're just resting the guy what does William Nylander need to do at practice today? <sighs> the structure of this series is so odd um, because there's no rest um, going into it, but there's rest built into the series. There's yes. two two-day mm -hmm. gaps if it goes seven. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which should be a double Saturday. Yeah. We'll see. As someone with a newborn. To refresh yeah, everybody's okay. memory on the Debrinket trade. Oh. Uh, on July 7th, 2022, the Ottawa Senators acquired Alex Debrinket for a first round pick, which turned out to be Kevin Korczynski, and a second round pick, which turned out to be Paul Ludwinski, and a third round pick from the Chicago Blackhawks. And then on July 9th, 2023, one year almost to the date later, they traded away to bring it to the Red Wings for a first from Boston uh, that's coming up in this draft, a fourth and two, uh, Dominique Kubalik, and another prospect. Yo, wow. that sucks ass. So wow. they swapped down a first round pick. What is that? Uh, like 20 places uh, for to bring it. And then. They move a first round pick, a top 12 pick to get Chikrin, and it looks like he's going to last there a year and a half and have to be moved again if Ottawa can't turn around early next season and be good. Yep. So conditions, Detroit has the option to send their own or Boston's 2024 first round pick. Mm -hmm. So we don't... Oh, let's we not don't linger. Even, we let's don't not, even oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Because they've been... They've been uh, 
there's a result of them. Yeah. They get Boston's first round pick. Yeah. Sucks. Should the Leafs lose to the Bruins just to make the picks the pick worse? You know, for the memes? <laughs> if they lose, that's why they did it. It's not because they're bad. Anyway, let's do the press conference. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. SDP VIP, Adam? Uh, yes, it's Absolutely. out and it is exciting. I wanted to ask you guys about this, and, and this is why I brought it up. Uh, obviously, we talked a little bit about John Tay Porter, but we also uh, we talked about the new Star Wars game that's coming out and the pricing model. And I wanted to know what you guys thought of it because the producer of this game, Ubisoft, has suggested that maybe you should get comfortable not owning video games anymore. And I bet Jesse and Steve were super cool headed about it. Mm. That's on the SDP VIP. You should get cool with me seizing the means of production. <laughs> Jesse, what's up? <laughs> the first question. Uh, yeah, so subscribe. Hit the link in the description, whether on audio or video, and uh, subscribe to SDP VIP. Someone just tweeted us, actually, that they are robbing us blind oh. by subs locking in their price for the next year on Apple, uh, where you can do that. That's the only platform where you can lock in the yearly price. of. It's like it's a couple. It's like less than 40 bucks for the entire year. Before Rip up, us off! Before it goes up in a month or so. All right, so first question comes from python 3504 would brody take the geo deal next season or does he walk oh, oh he walks. i he walks. i don't i don't think he's that bad no 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 he walks um and and you know what it might be it it might be time for him it maybe not maybe he has a better off season i think he'll be better next year than he is this year and i think he's gonna get another two three years i think he'd be interested in staying here yeah I do. I could, you know what? I don't know. Just based on what I'm hearing, and this is just a theory. This mm -hmm. is not some someone told me. Um, Ottawa can make some sense. I don't think Detroit is looking. They can make some sense. Buffalo. I think he wants to stay in the area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That would, you know what? I'd like to see TJ Brody back just at less money. He's not cooked. No, he's, he's not. I think he had a bad off season, and I think that that's yeah. plagued him all season. Give him a give him a a summer where horrible things don't happen, and I think he's a different player. Be ideal. Yeah, this is from Lost in the Sauston. <laughs> it says for Steve. Good one, Austin here. Yes, from beautiful Vancouver Island, holding down the fort over here for Leafs fans. Can we get a rallying? Why not embrace the fear for the Dangle Navy? Thanks, fellas. Love you all. Big hugs. All right. <laughs> Should the odds favor the Leafs in this series? No, of course not. The Leafs haven't beaten Boston this season. The Leafs are not a good matchup for Boston. The Bruins doubled up the Leafs in scoring. And I haven't felt this doomed in a playoff series <laughs> since the Toronto Maple Leafs as the seven seed were taken on the number two seed Ottawa Senators. Ooh. One of those things was because the Leafs were the seven seed and the Sens were the two seed. The other was the Sens kicked the dog crap out of the Toronto Maple Leafs in each and every game they played, except for, I think the last one that basically didn't matter uh, because it was still one and seven. And what happened? The Leafs, one, two, three, four, friggin' swept them. Patrick Laleem was not a bad goalie. He sure wasn't that serious. He was definitely at very least second best. Curtis Joseph drove them up a wall, drove them absolutely nuts, bonkers, because that is the kind of magic that you see in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Leafs, I saw this, I haven't confirmed this, but had a winning record against the Bruins in 2018 and 2019 when they lost. Didn't matter. Florida Panthers barely squeaked into the playoff spot last year. Didn't matter because they won. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. They built the team for this. So if you're just going on what you saw in the regular season, you're doing this wrong. Snot! That is what we were sold. And we looked at the games in October and we said, why isn't this team playing like a playoff team? Because it wasn't the playoffs. But they got better as the year went. Speed wobble a little bit at the end. But they got better 
month over month, year over year, this is it. You're not going to get another shot at this. Not with this group. You're not getting another shot at the Boston Bruins, a chance to slay your dragon. Take a look to your left. Take a look to your right. There's a really good chance those guys are gone. <laughs> if you lose this series, but you're not going to because you've been building to this point for a calendar year and you've been building towards this revenge for half a decade. Least fans, this is yours. Embrace it. Take the ride with your eyes wide open and your hands in the air. Because you never know when you're going to get another playoff series like this. How was that? I like that. I think we just wanted the line, but that'll do. <laughs> All right. Oh, I thought you said you wanted a... No, I liked it. I was in. <laughs> Are I'm you in. serious? I was yeah. only supposed to do the line? Yeah. All right, last two things. Why not? <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh my god, I just lost it. Oh, thank God. Okay, I got it back. All right, I was looking for this comment. So we got. Why didn't you cut me off? That was so that was, long. That was excellent. Oh. Maybe cut off great content. What are you talking about? No, that's a good. <laughs> you, that was awesome. You nailed it. That's good All right, so two things just to follow up on last show, and then we're gonna go here. Uh, one, uh, Cali Yarn Croak. So we got an email from somebody in Sweden. Uh, as your discussion on today's pod about how to pronounce yarn croak, meaning the word is actually, the meaning of the word is actually iron hook. Yes. And it's pronounced yarn, or yarn. I guess yarn. Let me see. Like cairns. Oh, let, let Swedish experts take Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, warm chocolate, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced yarn or yarn, like in cairns. Yarn. And in the end, it's neither crook nor crock, but rather a long O, like Cru like croak, yarn croak? like cool, similar to how you say the word cool in English. Yarn crook. So yeah, so yarn, yarn crook. crook, yarn crook. Um, but for the most part, I think it would sound pretty stupid if announcers in North America would try to use the Swedish pronunciations for our yes, players because we're speaking are. American here. So it's not cro crock or or croak. It's it's crook, yarn crook. <laughs> so that's very interesting. That's cool. Um. Thanks for a great show and greetings from Oh My God, Try and Pronounce This. Orn Scholzvit. Thank you. The home of Peter Forsberg, Marcus Naslin, Orn and Scholzvik. Sorry. And the Sweden twins. Oh. Uh, that is Lars Norden. Thank you, Lars. That was awesome. Wow, Lars Norden. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you from <laughs> the most Swedish. <laughs> And uh, last update, and then we're done. Uh, you mentioned that you were talking, you're like, I remember there was a uh, Maple Leafs game that ended, or a, a Raptors game that ended the same time as the Jays walk off. Yes. And they all ended up Maple Leafs. Where I was like, yeah, I think that's the Edwin one. Somebody in the, our YouTube comments, Chris, said, no, it wasn't a, um, a Jays playoff game. It was a Raptors playoff game. Yes. So they say, no, Jesse, Lowry hit a buzzer beater from half. Uh, to tie game one of the 2016 semifinals versus the Heat. That's and cool. the same night, Justin Smoke hit a game tying and then a walk-off home run to seal a Jays win against the Mariners. This happened on May 3rd. The, like, Chris, that's insane that you remember the date in the yeah. two games. Well done. So I want to shout him out, too, for wow. correcting me on that. I just remember it being a really big buzz like <laughs> it, uh, in Toronto sports media circles, because everyone who was working that night was like, "That was fucking insane." Yeah, because they were like a minute apart. That's yeah, crazy. yeah, they happened right there. How would so. you remember that? I know. <laughs> Me? No. Well, oh, I, him. Know, I, I was like, that. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I That's what I mean. Like, that's a crazy. Anyway, that says the guy with no memory. Hey, so listen. <laughs> Which team did you pick? I don't care. Who cares? Let's, I hope they all lose, except for the Leafs. Uh, we'll be seeing you, and and the Preds. Screw Real. them too. Real. Uh, we'll be Real. seeing you this weekend. Sunday is the next STP for stream Saturday night with Steve Dangle. STP. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.